was used to be a student at um, the University of Bristol now, uh, studying Jacques Kabul mainly for my PhD. Um, yes, will the gospel survive? Questions abound today about how Christians can utilize technology to communicate the gospel and what dangers be uh, believers face in using technology, as we've just been talking about for quite a while. I think many of these questions border on the banal, however, and do not get to the heart of the matter. That is, that technique alters the very form, content, and structure of language. Was the gospel a social message that must now be translated? If technical people are only social beings mediated through technology, the very language of Christian faith is increasingly incomprehensible. Uh, Alul is, of course, probably best known for his critique of technology, but uh, there's, of course, the problem with tran the translation of that term uh, from La Technique. Alul addresses that himself in uh, the technological system. Uh, there's also the, there's a further issue that I uh, feel is not often addressed in Alul's studies, and that is that the uh, conception of La Technique, I think, does get modified a bit throughout his career so that um, it is near the end of his career when he <coughs> explains a view of technique as one of three major environments in his historical meta-narrative of What I Believe, uh, from 1989, uh, Sikha Jekwa, 1987. Elul devotes four chapters therein to this all-encompassing meta-narrative of human history in which the technique is one of these three environments in which humanity has lived. Uh, technique, then, is not just one phenomenon among many, a system governing social life, but it is the world in which humanity now lives. Uh, so what is an environment, according to Alul? It is, firstly, the primary source of life, secondly, the primary source of death, and thirdly, as a consequence of these two things, it is the primary experience through which all other experience is mediated. The environment is all-encompassing, but it is this third point, that of mediation, that is most essential. For in mediating experience, the environment produces or provides a symbol and thus the possibility for language and creativity. Uh, these three environments of Elul correspond to three epochs of history that he identifies as prehistory, history, and post-history. Uh, in the natural environment, human beings were most benefited and threatened by natural causes. Nature mediated experience and thus gave rise to a natural society with natural techniques. Um, thus we see it that Elul does talk about uh, technique as always having existed. It's not a new phenomenon in that sense. It's always been there. Um, but it is different. Um, so, it, you know, to oversimplify Human relations in the natural world existed in highly naturalistic ways for the purpose of survival and biological thriving, traces of which world we still uh, live with in our own biology. With the dawn of history, what Alul calls history, the development of the city, um, society itself begins to be the totality of experience. Nature and technique are thus mediated through society and become social. Thus we have Archaeology can uh, trace pottery from very distinct tribes and map migrations and such. Um, uh, nature existed for the social group in this world. Uh, technique is also social and utilized for social ends. Um, yeah, Lul does talk about that with magic, for example, as well. Finally, with the end of history comes the technical environment. Lul's most famous book, um, La Technique, was an expression of the transition between the social and technical environments. He says as much in the first page of the technological system, where he says something to the effect that, you know, however many years ago I wrote that we live in this technological society, it's no longer the case. Um, we now live in what he variously calls in that book a system or an environment. Thus, uh, it's, it's a bigger thing than he presents in the technological society. In the technical environment, nature and society exist for the purpose of technical development, and all experience will increasingly be mediated through technique. Thus, la technique is not an isolated set of phenomena. 
that can be identified as alien and eradicated. La Technique is the interpretive framework of human life. Um, society thus is um, mediated in this way um, through technique and technology as is nature. Many examples you can read in my paper if you want, I'll skip over them. Um, it's clear you can't participate in society without internet access, etc., as we've talked about. Um, communication is, is uh, increasingly mediated solely through technique, especially with that striking example that Reid just gave us uh, with that student. Um, this helps form a technical people, a people who have no time for small talk, no time for pleasantries, the art of conversation, which was mentioned. Uh, but who have time only for the almighty fact. Pragmatism, thus, is the philosophy of technique. The technical person, the human resource, uses language to communicate information and data. Uh, this mediation of nature and society through technique raises numerous important questions, which Elul addresses many of. Uh, the question I'm asking, particularly, is will the gospel survive this environment? The problem of revelation in the technical environment must be raised prior to any moral or practical questions that Christians consider today. If the gospel is modified by our environmental transition, it cannot survive, if it cannot survive this translation, nothing remains but the shadows of an outdated religion, a religion that belongs to the category of play, as I argued recently in Bordeaux. The revelation of uh, I'll argue here that the revelation of God um, is social, or it occurred at least in Elul's meta-narrative in the social environment. The revelation of God on Elul's account is clearly within this environment. Uh, the Bible, taken as a meta-narrative, is a concern of God and his reconciliation with an ever-expanding group of people. It is relational, and therefore it seems that the application of social to this message is fitting. Elul himself could be called a theologian of reconciliation, um, though, of course, following Karl, Karl Barth in this regard. Elul prefers the term la rupture instead of the fall, precisely because he sees the gospel as concerned with broken and reconciled relationship, rather than ontological categories of fall and uh, restoration. So Elul argues that Jesus Christ exists within history, is that which gives history meaning, he gives that in uh, Apocalypse, the book of Revelation. Um, and because Jesus is the meaning of history for Elul, it seems, and, and the social environment is the period of history, as he says, it seems that Jesus was incarnate within the social environment. <clears throat> if Jesus is the meaning of history, and we have abandoned history in the post historical technical environment, clearly we have abandoned Jesus by that logic. Not only have we abandoned Jesus, we have disincarnated him. Uh, by denying the possibility of the meaning of his historic incarnation, of that great meeting point on the cross of the vertical and <coughs> horizontal, of the holy other and the radically similar. Elul argues just such a point in humiliation of the word. The word of God is humiliated by the de facto triumph of the image, especially in the contemporary technical world. But to devalue the word is to devalue the incarnation. As Elul explains, since all Christianity depends on the incarnate word, the word made flesh, we must say that there is no Christian faith outside the world. Our description of the God who speaks points to what is specific and particular in Christian revelation. If we devalue the word even a little, we are rejecting all of Christianity and the incarnation." End quote. Thus, a denial of the possibility of the incarnation and the possibility of reconciliation it brings, I would argue, is the underlying spiritual motive of human technical progress. But what is important to understand at this point is that Jesus, it seems, belongs to the social environment. And clearly, we do not. Um, dozens of examples uh, can be given, and I've given a number in the paper, um, from you know, pointing out the problems we have. We have God is love, what is love, what is prayer, in the technical world, that of course the rule addresses in uh, prayer and modern man, um, covenant, atonement, hermeneutics, all of these ideas are radically modified if a rule's meta narrative is correct and we live in a different environment. Um, 
I'm moving on. As, as environment, technique is immediate. The means that, this means that experience of the natural and social worlds are mediated through technique. The consequences of this for language are profound. Language is essentially a social entity, it seems. It exists for social ends. If truth is always and everywhere only expressible by language, and language is social, truth is social, and therefore truth becomes mediated through technique. In other words, truth in the technical environment is mediated through fact. Um, right. So, uh, just to point out a bit of this transition from the social language to technical language, um, if, if language is social, uh, the form of language, uh, I would argue, to use Aristotle's terms of, of the four causes, the technical environment alters the formal, material, instrumental, and final causes of language. That is, it alters it in every shape that it takes. Um, We have uh, the form of language, its grammatical structures, its symbols, have corresponded to the needs of a society and the environment in which it lives. You have various genres with social status and function. Um, each genre has its own literary rules, its own precise form. Uh, but all of these forms have social values. Now, more important, the genre still is the very basis of the word itself, which is symbol. As Elul noted, environment is that which gives language its symbolic content and thus makes language possible. Envir uh, orientation to this environment becomes uh, the, the genesis of symbol. Symbol, therefore, could be classified into a little three environments, the natural, the social, and the technical. Um, the external, non-human world gives us innumerable symbols, and we see this in language all the time, uh, conceiving human beings in networks now, uh, the term, that term of which originally applied to fishing nets, and all throughout its evolution refers to technical entities. Uh, the the uh, natural world as well, we conceive as an ecosystem, uh, as if you know, it's already a reified entity, but now it takes on a reification in technical terms. Um, so I think language um, Language is as that means by which people may come together as one, that which essentially reduces difference by, as we said, dialogue, has in many ways reached its zenith in our own time and perhaps is in decline. Global human unity has never been more a reality than it is today, as a number of distinct social groups and uh, <coughs> cultures die away in the face of a monolithic technical anti culture. Traditional forms of language have been and will become irrelevant. Language is fundamentally altered then in all of its forms. Um, this brings us to the spiritual dimensions of this that I think are often missed with Elul in his discussion of technique. Uh, this transition from the social to the technical language is not simply a material fact without spiritual value. Language is bound to spirituality and the fundamental change in environment is also spiritual. Human language operates with the same high-handed piracy that human techniques do, molding God's creation and creative forces for our own ends, irrespective of a relationship with God. This was seen in the Babel narrative, uh, as Elul describes in Meaning of the City. But Elul says in Emulation of the Word that, I quote, human sovereignty is due more to our language than to our techniques or instruments of war. Naming something means asserting oneself as subject and designating the other as object. It is the greatest spiritual and personal adventure." End quote. Uh, language, then, is humanity's greatest spiritual, is, is its greatest spiritual venture. And when this venture is turned toward technique, technique becomes endowed with sacral qualities that make technique all pervasive. This is the dialectic of environment that's so essential to understand. The environment is dialectically dependent upon humanity, as well as being external to human beings. That technique is a human creation is obvious. That it has become an environment uh, is perhaps less obvious, but that if, if it is truly an all-pervasive environment, it must be our responsibility, that is indisputable. I guess unless you believe in demons of technology. Uh, of vital importance is what Elul says in that book, New Demons. 
He says, I quote, and this, this I think is uh, one of the most fundamental quotes to keep in mind when studying technique in a mule. He says, it is not technique itself that which enslaves us, but the transfer of the sacred into technique. Technique is not the enemy, therefore, our own spirituality is. And if language represents the spiritual power, as Elul has said, the fact of the technical environment seems to be deadly to the word of God. The adoption of this environment means that the incarnation has been undone by humanity. The word of God that came to dwell us, that is, in a relationship for the purpose of reconciliation, has been disincarnated. By removing ourselves uh, that last possibility of communication, with God, we systematically deny His Word a presence in our world. It is not as though uh, the technical environment removes speech or relationships, as this is clearly not the case. Uh, people talk and have some kind of relationship on Facebook all the time. In fact, they often talk more now than they used to. Uh, rather, the technical environment mediates all aspects of life through technique. This means that the Gospel is conceived in technical terms. It is spoken of for its effects. Jesus becomes a means to an end, whether that be social justice, psychological well-being, divine moral approbation, a prayer answer, the giver of the Holy Spirit who works miracles of healing and wealth creation, etc. Elul well speaks of faith as meaningless in his book Living Faith. Following Dietrich Bonhoeffer, he thinks that faith in Jesus Christ must always be last, or as Bonhoeffer says, ultimate which means that it can never exist for any reason other than itself, which is to say, faith is always an end, it can never be a means to some further end. Um, thus, this is an important point, the word of God turned into means ceases to be the word of God. The word of God as means makes the God of this phrase to be ourselves deified. For if the revelation of God is truly self-revelation in Jesus Christ, our possession of it, our ownership, our use of it, makes us the masters of it, and thus we become God. Um, I give a few examples. Uh, these are my opinions and observations of what could be, um, and you could say the medium has the message. This could be the subliminal. Uh, so I think, uh, I think the, this is not to critique these in and of themselves, but the emphasis on them. I think the recent revival of spiritual disciplines is telling in that it is often uh, a means. Uh, our um, stewardship and redemption, I think, are key examples of the technical gospel uh, in that they often fail to ask the question of what is a resource, rather they ask the secondary question of how do we use this resource. And I think Christian involvement in ecological movements is necessarily subverted because of this idea of stewardship. In any case, it's a side point. The redemption is similar. Um, so the conclusion is, will the gospel survive? Uh, does it need radical new translations? Such translations have long been underway. And this, I think, is a surprising twist. Faith in Jesus Christ has always been subverted by human beings. Jesus has always been disincarnated by the church and society at large. And the natural revelation, uh, the revelation of God had uh, said nothing um, the revelation of God said that nothing has spiritual value unless given to it by God. The sun, moon, stars were not gods, etc. In the social environment, of course, Jesus is the one who came declaring he brought a sword of division. He did not come to bring peace, which is what religion so earnestly desires. Um, in the technical environment, he has not come as means to some further end, etc. Um, so I think the gospel uh, will survive by God's grace and power alone. It is the responsibility of Christians to recognize uh, the fundamentally different environment in which we live and the problems it raises for the understanding and transmission of the gospel. Can the gospel be translated to the technical world? It already has been, and yes, it is a radical subversion of the gospel. But that's not necessarily a new situation insofar as the gospel has been subverted throughout its history by the social environment in which it was revealed, as it will talk about in subversion. Um, therefore, the gospel is not the environment, nor is it the transmission of the environment. It's not fundamentally social, natural, or technical. The good news of God and Jesus Christ is reconciliation. Uh, but this is not social insofar as that it cannot be mediated through human societies. Uh, 
hence it will lose um, heavy importance of the individual. And I will leave it there. clarification. Uh, in the, in the uh, technological system, it seems to me what Ewell is saying is different, is that the computer somehow has made uh, a lot of technique more of an environment. And one could say that that's a continuation of the stage of an autonomy that he discusses in the technological society. I find no place in the technological system where he says that, that, that there have always been techniques in the sense that he means it in the technological society, or in terms of its, its development in the technological system. In some ways, it's a small point, uh, maybe just a, a verbal point, but as you say, uh, it doesn't make any sense to say technique is not new, but now it's different. I mean, I don't know the difference. I don't know how two things can be identical or different. Uh, there seems to me fundamentally a difference. Now, what would you say, uh, within each of the stages, the three stages, would each stage have a different symbol, a unique symbol? Would, would symbolism be different and problematic in each stage? Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure that... That's a good question. I think, I think symbol would have a different... could have a different function in each of the environments. Right. Uh, because I think... Um, I, I, I take what Elul talks about with environment to be, uh, and, his, and his talk on the sacred, to, uh, to ultimately be a discussion of, of, of how people will be integrated into the world in which they live. Um, and thus, language, symbol, will acquire different functions and features in, based on the environment in which they live. It relates to David's question, my question. Uh, well, you, you've brought up many interesting questions, actually, that I've been, that I've been um, also brought about in, in, other, in other talks today. But fundamentally, about symbolism, if technique, as an all-mediating process, has actually displaced and then replaced the mediation in the natural milieu and in the urban milieu, nature and the city being the other two milieu who, uh, that, that we have, if that is the case, that means actually also rendered dysfunctional the kind of symbolism that existed in the natural milieu and the urban milieu. And the fact that symbolization was possible is because all the, as all the items that descended from the natural milieu and the urban milieu are dialectic. In other words, we can symbolize because there's a dialectic. Uh, you cannot symbolize where there's identity between one thing and the other, right? In your opinion, is technique dialectical? Is technique symbolizing? Um, I, th I think I think it does, as insofar as we're not. Uh, I guess I'd hesitate to say we live in completely the technical environment, um, because as as I mentioned with network and so many other terms, we do have symbols coming from the technical world to describe social realities. Um, but I think, I think that is a good point, that it, it is, and I, I tried to mention that a bit, is that I think language in some ways can be seen to be a, a decline in its functions. It little talks about the loss of mystery and, and um, those kind of issues, and thus the loss of some essential features of language because it becomes a communication of, of facts, information transfer, rather than um, you know, rather than event, an event between you know, two subjects. As it were. As it, as it. Um, you mentioned the technicization of the spiritual disciplines. And I wanted you to maybe describe what you, you're thinking about that. Um, as I think of the disciplines, most of them seem uh, to promote inaction and inefficiency of meditation and prayer and fasting, which are kind of, uh, you know, actions that are, are not engaging necessarily economically or uh, productive, maybe with the exception of service uh, at times. But I wondered how you, 
understood the technicization of those disciplines and how kind of they're subverted um, rather than drawing us to faith. It seems like they're, they should be a means to faith, but you're worried that they're not. I, uh, I would say there's no means to faith. Mm -hmm. um, the disciplines, the, I would say the spiritual disciplines lead only to spirituality, which has nothing to do with the God of Jesus Christ. Uh, because spiritual disciplines can exist in any spiritual milieu. Uh, you know, Buddhist, Buddhism could be far more effective in spiritual disciplines. Yoga could be much better, which I think is why Christianity has now looked east for all sorts of disciplines to engage the human spiritual element. I think the gospel is not about our spirituality, but again, centered always on the person and the reconciliation, such that Again, not to say that prayer is wrong, obviously meditation is wrong, I wouldn't say that at all, but that those must be a response of the relationship that exists rather than a means to faith. It seems like they're, they're based in scripture as well, and the practices of the church and Jesus, so uh, I mean, how would you ever get to any spiritual discipline through just a, a faith outside of that? It seems like it's more... Uh, Kind of coming together, the, the practice and faith can be in form. So, I, just, yeah, I think it's a good point. And uh, thank you for your presentation. It's very uh, interesting. Um, I wonder if Wittgenstein might be a way to talk about the rule and language a bit, because Wittgenstein defines language as a kind of practices and forms of life. It's not just the, not merely the words we use, but it's something we're socialized into and it mediates everything we see um, and do. And then, so that definition, and then the way you described how a Lul uses language is that, for example, naming, you become subject, that becomes object. That sounds like a way of talking about language that is very different than Wittgenstein, um, in which certain kinds of <coughs> technique may be inherent in language. Um, and I wonder if Wittgenstein may help correct that, or if, I don't know if there's a play that can be done there. Or maybe I'm misunderstanding what yeah, that's an interesting point. Um, I, I think that would be a fair critique of the Lul's view that is, is, well, this is the way I would put it. I think, I think language then would tend always toward technique um, in the sense that uh, if, if a Lul is a theologian of, of rupture and reconciliation, if, you know, the accumulation of the word is all about the rupture of the word and image and their eventual reconciliation in Christ, I think you could say, language is essentially divorced from its social function in the rupture, uh, and that it's, it can only regain its proper life and function uh, in, in Christ. Um, so that it will tend toward uh, the mastery, you know, that, that sort of the master, you know, the, to name something is to become the master of it, right? And, and uh, I think it will points that out in uh, the city, I believe, the Tower of Babylon there, too. Good. Last question for Dr. Bahani, and then we'll keep the answer short. I don't know. It seems to me that the answer to your question, I mean, the response to your own question, was the gospel survive by saying yes, but it sounded to me like a nebulous yes. But to have some more clarification, I'd like to ask the same question quite differently. I take it you know uh, Richard Niebuhr's book, Past and Culture. Uh, in which, which of the five types that Niebuhr analyzes put uh, a rule in any of the five? Uh, it, it, only because the more I hear you, the more I get convinced that uh, when they use says technique, ultimately what it means is that there is uh, uh, no technique but of the human being becoming human. Sense of the movement. It's, language is a technique of the human like us. Mm. Yes, but I, I, I think I, I don't know. This is where I would depart from a little, perhaps, is a, a being very careful with notions of ontology there and getting what you know. What does it mean to the human? Uh, because I think. Um, I, th I think it's got to be invented. That's yeah, and, and I, I think that's what technique does. Is it's, it's creating a kind of humanity, and I think that's what the, the rupture must play a part in. Is we cannot access 
uh, it cannot access nature. We, the world that God created is not, is not the world we live in. Humanity, the humanity that God created is not, in the same sense, us. And so the... Uh, what do you mean? The world that God created is not the way we live in? <laughs> it, in the sense that it has, um, we, have, we have fundamentally altered its, the, the world. Uh, obviously, the objective reality is there, but the world as we conceive it is, is very different from the world that God created. Well, it's the uh, fundamental question. Did, did God intend to create humans? Yeah, that was always answered yes. But I don't answer it that way anymore because I yeah, have a knowledge but, but, that humans you know, didn't have. You know what Bart said about the idea of universal salvation? All right, well, this is another. <laughs> <laughs> the, the lineup for follow up conversations with our speakers is very, very long tonight. So thank you all very much. Let me just do a couple of very quick announcements because everyone is eager to stretch their legs. Um, 